Well, I'm from Philadelphia, but people don't realize that this looting and vandalism isn't just occurring downtown. It's also occurring in West Philadelphia and some of those commercial strips and is adversely affecting low-income people who are living there. Some of them, uh, the CVS uh, pharmacy has been destroyed. The, the center that, that conducts dialysis, <clears throat> it's gone. People don't realize the self-destruction that is going on in that city, but it's horrible. And I think it, a lot of the responsibility is with that district attorney in the mayor's office. They've only prosecuted, arrested 470 people this year. When 2017, 1,500 were arrested. So I just think that the blame for a lot of that is in the hands of the district attorney and their lenient policies toward lawlessness. Well, I'm sure you being from Philadelphia and other people you know from Philly are really uh, heartbroken by this. I, uh, one of the attorneys for one of the defendants said uh, his client was motivated by racial justice, but police say there wasn't any connection between an earlier protest of the drop charges against that officer and the looting. So in your estimation, what caused it? What caused it, I just think, uh, a number of causes. One, there's just been uh, permissiveness on the part of the authorities in, in prosecuting criminal behavior. You get more of what you reward and less of what you punish. Criminals have been rewarded by lenient response. Also, the attack on the police, defund the police movement. There are fewer officers, more retiring in some places around the country. It's 30 minutes before a 911 response because of the overall assault on policing, the, the overemphasis on race as the cause of disparities is also taking its toll, too. Uh, nothing is more lethal than telling people that they are exempt from any personal responsibility because of their race. These young people uh, are, should, should be held accountable. And the question is, where are the parents of these kids? Everybody's a victim, right? So Philadelphia District Attorney, you'd mentioned him, Larry Krasner, he refers to the store lootings as unrest. He says he'll hand out justice appropriately to those 72 people that he arrested, but most are between the ages of 18 and 25. They have no criminal record. So does this mean that he'll let them go and they won't have any consequences for their criminal behavior? That's been his orientation from the very beginning. He believes that if somebody is black, they ought to be exempt from any personal responsibility. And nothing is more racist than to have a diminished expectations for black folks in the name of social justice. There's nothing more insulting. In fact, I'm a veteran of the civil rights movement, and I say I would prefer to have a, an outright bigot in an office of his than to have someone who, who, whose racism is, 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 is clothed in social justice language. Wow. Uh, so tell us what the Woodson Center then is doing in Philadelphia, other cities to help transform lives. There is a positive here. Yeah, we have been very active in, 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 in solving these kind of problems in Washington, D.C. and other cities. We have gone into these troubled communities and identified what we call healing agents, or Josephs, if you will. And, and, and that is, these are the people who have, through God's grace, have been redeemed. And then they come together with others who have been redeemed, and they create centers of peace in these communities. We call it the violence-free zone. We've gone into an area in Washington where there were 53 gang murders in a five-square-block area, uh, and we recruited some of these young people to come into our office, signed a peace treaty, and, and transform and redeem them from becoming creditors to ambassadors of peace. The problems confronting these communities will not be solved by pointing the finger at racism. It's only going to be solved by going into these communities and finding out who is raising children that are not dropping out of school or in jail and drugs to find out what is going on in the 30 percent of the households and then try to mobilize what's going on in the 30 percent of those households to apply to the 70 percent that is dysfunctional. OK, making a difference in America's inner cities. Robert Woodson, founder and president of the Woodson Center. Thank you and God bless you. Good talking with you. Thank you so much.